Three style is a blindfolded solving method that is used by the fastest blind solvers in the world. How it works is we use intuitive commutators to cycle around three pieces at once. For example, edge cycle of three pieces and corner cycle of three pieces. So to follow along, you have to know a few things. First, you have to know how to solve a 3x3 blindfolded, and that means knowing how to memorize the letters for all the pieces. Next, you have to know how commutators work, and there are intuitive algorithms that cycle three pieces at once. To learn either of these, I have the tutorials in the description. So you have to know all the options you have at any time, so first we'll review the different types of commutators you can do. So for corners here, I have an interchange from two to three, and one is over here. So I can either do the interchange first, then insert one to two like this, and then undo both of those. Or I can insert one to two first, and then reverse the interchange. So again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go watch the commutator tutorial. And there is one more way of inserting corners that's useful for blind. If you want to insert two to three like this with their interchange being the D layer, then we'll have to do R2, U, R2, U prime, R2, and then interchange. And then the reverse is the same thing. R, U, R2, U prime, R2. For edges, there are more commutator types. The first is where your interchange is a slice move, and then you can move this one to here and then undo, undo. And again, if you interchange the slice move, you can do the interchange last by solving the odd piece first. So this one can be moved to here without disturbing the M slice by doing this, or by doing something like this. And then reverse interchange, and then undo, and undo. The next type is when your interchange is an outer turn instead of a slice move. So again, two options, you can either interchange first and then solve this one, or you can solve this one first, and then reverse interchange. This one's not the same type of commutator, but it's useful to know. So this is where these two are across from each other and these two are also across from each other. So in this case, how to solve this is identify which one goes the farthest. So one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes all the way here to one. Three goes the farthest, so we will swap three with the neighboring piece first, so like this. And then next we wanna swap three with one in the same layer. So we will slice that over and swap this as well. And then that solves the cycle. And in three blind, this cycle is often done on the side. So first, let's look at corners. With 3Style, to get the best commutators for your finger tricks, it's best to use UFR as your corner buffer, which means we start memorization by looking at this sticker and then going from there. So the memorization is exactly the same as for old Pachman. So for example, this sticker belongs right here, which is the letter T. I'll be using the SPEFS lettering scheme. All right, so here's the full memorization for the corners. Now we're going to group them into pairs and solve each of these pairs with one commutator only. The first letter pair is TS, so I want to go from the buffer to T, to S. That is my cycle. So here, much like with F2L, I'm not going to talk about speed optimization, but just showing you how you would do this intuitively. So we have one, two, three, and of course we have an interchange from two to three like that. So I have a few options of how to do this commutator, and I'll just show you a way that involves a rotation. So I can move one to two like this, and then reverse the interchange, which is U, and then undo and undo. My next letter pair is BU, so buffer to B to U. Now I have an interchange from one to two, but no quick way to insert three. So instead I'm just going to do a setup move of L. And now three is in a spot where I can easily insert to one by doing R prime T2 R. And then reverse the interchange and then undo, undo, and undo the setup move. My next letter pair is buffer to P to I. So in this case, I don't have a one move interchange. Well, I do have one to two, but that moves three as well. So instead I will just do a setup move. And so here I'm going to choose the setup move L prime and that makes an interchange here. So then next I can move three to one like this and then insert two to three and then reverse, reverse and reverse the setup move. And my next letter pair is buffer to R to N. And again, I don't have a nice one move interchange, so I can do a setup move. So here's an example of where there are multiple options for what to do for a setup move. So for example, F gives me an interchange between one and three, and it also gives me an interchange from two to three, but this one is not going to work out so well because inserting one to three will be very hard. If I do B, as far as the corners are concerned, that's kind of the same thing. I have the interchange here and the interchange here. Now what's gonna happen after this F move is I'm going to need to insert two to three, which is going to be done like this, or I can try to avoid a rotation and do it like this. Either way, the finger tricks are going to be bad. So once you get better at three style, you want to optimize how you do a lot of these. So in this case, just to preview what it would look like if you're trying to speed optimize is instead of doing F or B, you will do U, R. And this achieves the exact same thing with how you get the interchanges, but it's gonna be nicer for finger tricks. So two going to three would be R, D, R prime, and then the interchange U2. And then reverse, reverse, and undo the setup moves. So for edges, our buffer is the UF sticker. So I start by looking where this goes, and this goes to right here, which is the letter K. This goes to J, and this goes to 
G, then H, then M. And this is the buffer piece, so I will start a new cycle by picking any sticker. Here's the full memorization for these edges, and I'll walk through how you would do them. So my first letter pair is K, J, so I go from the buffer to K to J. And so here, of course, I could do the interchange first, or I could move three to one first. I think it'll be better to move three to one. So I can do this, interchange, and then undo that. My next letter pair goes from the buffer to G to H. So in this case, I don't have a slice interchange, but I do have a one move interchange here. So here what I could do is put one to two first, like this, and then interchange, and then undo, and then undo. Next is buffer to M to A. And often when you see this pattern here, what you can do is set up into the four mover. So how we can do it is with S and then U prime. And that sets them up across from each other and across from each other. So to solve this, we will move two all the way to the other side. So that means we have to swap with two first. So I will do R2 here and then bring the other two into that layer and then R2 and undo that slice. Next, we undo the setup moves, which were S, U prime. So now we do U, S prime. Here's another way you can solve this cycle. So what you can do is R prime first, and that gives you a one move interchange between one and three. Next, inserting two into either of these two spots will be very awkward. So instead I will add another U prime setup move. Now I can insert two to three easily by doing L, E prime, L prime, and then interchange, and then undo and undo. And then undo the setup moves in the beginning. So now U, R. Next we have the buffer, S, F. So for this one, we have a one move interchange from one to three, although it's a little awkward to grab this piece into either of these. What we could do is F prime cube rotation and then do this commutator, which can be done in a few ways because we have this interchange on green and this interchange in the slice. I don't know the speed optimal way to do this, but just from some experimentation, I found wide R U2 and that sets up into this, which is a little bit better than what we started with. And then I can cancel that U2 into inserting three to one like this and then M prime M and then undo setup. Next, buffer to T to A, and you should recognize what to do with this pattern. In this case, we can set this one up to the bottom here, U prime, and that gives us a four mover. Two is the one that goes all the way over to here, so I will do R2 first, and then move these two into this layer, R2, S prime, and then undo the setup moves, so U, R prime. So going through the corners, if you use UFR as your buffer, then you're going to get this, and that is an odd number of letters, so there's parity. Next, knowing that I have parity, I will want to solve edges differently. So remember, this is only if you have parity. You want the white green piece to be here instead and the white red piece to be here instead. So starting memorization now, I have this one, which goes to here. This is the letter L. This one goes to here, which is Q. This one goes not to the buffer. So I'm not gonna start a new cycle here, even though I reached the buffer piece, because since I have parity, I instead want this piece to be over here. So that means this one goes to here and the next letter I memorize is M. Continuing on, this goes to O, G, S, and then instead of S going to B, where it belongs, I'm going to put it in its swapped location since it's parity, which is over here, which is the buffer. So of course, I'm not gonna memorize this because you never memorize the buffer. So instead, I will just start a new cycle now. Everything from here proceeds as usual. So for example, D is unsolved, I could go D and then J and then D, so a new cycle again, and then I can pick U, which goes to N, which goes back to U, and that ends the memorization. If you've done this correctly and put two pieces in their swapped location, you will get an even number of edges, and that means you've done it correctly. So after memorizing corners, memorizing edges, we will then execute edges, then execute corners, except for the last corner letter. So here's what it looks like after I finish executing edges. As you can see, we have a swap right here. And here's what it looks like after I finish executing corners, except for the last letter being I. Once you're here, we're going to set up into a PLL. So how that works is we have a swap between these two edges and also a swap from this corner to this corner because the buffer to my letter I. So I wanna do some sequence of moves that puts this in the top layer. So that's just gonna be L prime. So now I have a swap like this and a swap like this, which is a Y perm. So I can do U2 Y perm and then undo the setup moves. Here's an example of a different case you could run into. So if your last letter was F, then you wanna set this into the top layer and that can be done with L prime B prime. And that gives you this corner swap and this edge swap, which is just a J perm. And then undo the setup moves. So quick review for how parity works. Memorize corners to see if you have parity. And if you do have parity, then memorize edges such that your UF and UR edges are swapped. Then solve all the edges and solve all the corners except for the last letter. Do setup moves to get the last letter into the top face and do a PLL. In the beginning when you learn this, it is incredibly slow because you have to do a lot of thinking. 
three style has a ton of cases, but that doesn't mean it has a ton of algorithms. Just like F2L has a ton of cases, but it's actually very intuitive. And you will be able to find commentator lists for different buffers. I will also link it in the description, but that doesn't mean you should use this as your main learning tool. Just like I have an F2L PDF, but you shouldn't actually memorize 77 F2L cases. For three style, you should do a lot of intuitive solves yourself. And then once you are decent with a lot of the commutators, then check with these resources to see if what you are using is currently the best. So these resources should be used more for optimization rather than for learning, because learning this full list is not the best way to go about it. All right, so that's it. If you want to learn Ika or Orozco, which are the intermediate methods, I'll put links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.